Hey everybody, Daniel here with another video. This time about cruise lines and whether we finally reached the right time to invest. Coming up in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the levels of optimism around the pandemic and the vaccines, and whether there's any pent up demand for travel. There are lots of businesses associated with travel, so I'm going to be explaining why cruise lines are a good pick when coming out of this recession. And then a deeper dive on the stock that I'm interested in and a quick look at the moves that I've made over the last couple of weeks and the plans for the next couple of weeks. Pandemic optimism. Having been in varying levels of social restrictions and full lockdowns, we've all been looking for signs of when the end might be. And with the vaccines now rolling out at a pace, we are already seeing the effects that this is having. Israel is ahead in the level of vaccinations, reaching 20% of their population. And although they have some issues with people following the restrictions, there is real evidence that the vaccinations are working. Furthermore, research in the UK is suggesting that the current vaccines are protecting against some of the new strains of the virus, and modifying the vaccines in the future to tailor towards the mutated strains will not be a problem. So all in all, some very positive news after a terrible last 11 months. There is still some way to go though, the UK is aiming to vaccinate the most vulnerable groups in February and all the adults over 50 by May. And this is on the assumption that we don't hit any problems. Selfishly, as a UK resident, it's great to see this. But of course, the virus won't be under control until the whole world is populated. Unrestricted travel will only be available when all countries have the virus under control and have measures to keep it that way. So we'll need to see the US and European countries making efforts to send vaccines to other parts of the world to keep the momentum and reach the end of this pandemic. So have we got pent up demand for travel? It's very difficult to measure, of course, but if you follow the headlines, you will be led to believe that as soon as the travel restrictions are lifted, we're all going on holiday. Taking the most pessimistic view, there must be some pent up demand. A lot of people are a lot worse off because of the pandemic, but everyone is spending less and restricted to stay at home wherever possible. So the ones that are lucky enough to maintain their employment will likely have extra money and a feeling of wanting to get out and travel. Also, if you look at the types of people that would travel anyway, they would be the more wealthy portion of the population and those retired from work. Both groups are likely to have not been affected by the pandemic. In my opinion, I think business travel will take much longer to recover and might not even get there with changing working practices and remote working. But at least in 2021 and into 2022, I think we'll see holiday travel returning to some kind of normality, with some people opting to travel at the first available opportunity and some waiting for the situation and prices to stabilise. So why cruise line operators? Well, cruise customers are generally retirees and the wealthy. Both would have been the least affected by the pandemic. At least for me, airlines are too competitive and I think the prices will continue to get driven down. It's all about cost for an airline and the race to the cheapest ticket price. Airlines are also struggling to survive at the moment with shrinking balance sheets. And we still don't know when travel restrictions will be fully lifted. As remember, the vaccinations need to be proved to be successful worldwide before we can fully open the taps and allow people to travel. Cruise lines, however, are able to maintain a much higher ticket price as it's all about the experience rather than purely travel. And nearly 40% of their revenue is made up from onboard spending, casinos, shopping, bars and the like. Cruise lines are dominated by three main operators, Carnival Cruise Lines, Royal Caribbean and Norwegian Cruise Lines. So this makes the competition much less aggressive. It's estimated that 14 million passengers will cruise this year, and of that, 10.5 million will be with one of these three operators. 75% of cruise revenue will also go to these three operators. You can see from the table that all of the main cruise brands that we're used to seeing fall under one of these three companies and consume most of the market. The question for me is when is the right time? Cruise stocks have been slowly gaining over the last few months, as other investors have been following the same thought processes. However, now we can almost see how this pandemic could end. And although there is still much uncertainty, we are seeing far more good news rather than bad. 
Of the cruise stocks that are most interesting to me, I'm picking Carnival Cruise Lines. It's the biggest one. Its pre-pandemic revenue was $21 billion and profit was $3 billion. It has the most market share, nearly 40%. It has the strongest balance sheet with $10 billion in cash, which is enough to get through another year of being closed if it had to. The other companies, Norwegian and Royal Caribbean, don't have enough cash to get through another year without additional financing. If Carnival can get back to anywhere near its pre-pandemic levels, it will be a very profitable company generating huge revenues. And let's not forget that cruise passengers were growing up to 2019 and revenues for cruise companies were growing even faster as they grew revenues from onboard sales as well as ticket prices. Another reason for Carnival is that it's currently priced the cheapest when compared to its price in February. So it has the most upside if it recovers. If it was 2019 with its current market cap of $22 billion, it would have a price to sales ratio of 1 to 1 and a price to earnings ratio of 10 to 1, both super low. So it's all down to whether this stock and indeed the whole industry can recover. So to finish off, what I'm doing at the moment is moving some money around. The majority of my portfolio is in growth stocks and they've all had a very good run along with the wider market. So to reduce my exposure and risk as the US market hits all time highs, I'm going to take some profits and move money to CCL, which in comparison at least, is a much lower risk value stock. I'm selling my workhorse stock, which is currently sitting at 120% gains. You can't blame anyone for taking profits at 120%, but it's also very risky. The stock price has gone up a lot recently with President Biden endorsing electric vehicles, but it's still predicated on whether it can win the USPS contract to provide last mile delivery vehicles to the postal service. And of course, there's a chance that it won't. It's not really generating any revenue either, so it's still a very risky play. I also have some canoe, which I'm hoping will have the same boost as it's caught up in rumours that it will form part of the EV platform that will underpin the new Apple car with Hyundai. If it continues to rise, I will sell these two. It's a pre-revenue company, so very speculative, and a stock that's likely to plummet with the next market correction. And of course, if you saw my last video, if any of my SPAC investments complete their merger, I will sell on this news. Everything else I own is established, generating revenue, and here for the long term, so I'm holding everything else. As far as CCL is concerned, I'm going to try and get up to a portfolio value of 10%. This is around £3,000, whilst keeping 20 to 30% in cash in case there is a big correction, which presents a big buying opportunity. And a small update on my biotech stocks from my previous video. I've managed to double them on the recent dips, and apart from Editas, all going well. They are very turbulent stocks to own by their very nature. So I'm going to sit tight on these and have confidence that the treatments in clinical trials will come to market and start curing the incurable. So I hope that was all useful to you. Thank you very much for watching. I'm a tiny channel trying to grow, so please give me feedback in the comments. Like if you liked, and please consider sharing and subscribing for more. And I'll see you soon in the next video.